Hey everybody, it's Brian Kenny. Welcome to MLB Now Home Edition. Our guest today is Joe Lemire of Sport Techie. Joe, it's good to see you again. Good to be here. Yeah, although not next to you as usual. Be nice to be. At some point, we'll, we'll be together again. Um, look, this is obviously something that is way down on the list of important things at this time. And yet, at a certain point, there is a whole class of kids who have been playing baseball their whole lives trying to become major leaguers. And this is a really tough year on them. What is scouting and that whole community doing right now, besides like nothing or training? What is the state of that, that whole class that was getting ready for the, a draft or getting close to being drafted? Amateur baseball has certainly been hit pretty hard. And, and as you say, way down that list of priorities in, in the grand scheme of things. But you've got a lot of, you know, high school seniors, um, you know, ma major prospects who are college juniors who were targeting this 2020 draft as their moment to, to, to really shine. You know, you have so many kids who, who, who would have worked hard all off season, um, you know, in the, especially with high schoolers, there's a scouting adage that they, they change uh, in terms of body and skills every 90 days. And so a lot of them hadn't been playing in front of scouts since, you know, a fall ball league and they've had two cycles to reinvent themselves. And then if they're in a Northern state, they didn't get to see the field at all. Uh, if they were in other states, you know, they probably played at maybe a dozen games. A lot of college seasons were only about that, too. And then everything came to a screeching halt. And so we've got a, a much shorter Major League Baseball draft, as, uh, as I'm sure everyone's aware, with only with only five rounds. I think you're going to see a number of uh, of these talented players not fit into the, the picture of those five rounds the way that maybe they would have in, in 10 or 20 or, or, or normal 40. And so you're going to see probably more kids – head off to even if it's a junior college for one year or those who had been scouted by the the, the larger four-year programs you may be going there for three years and you're going to start seeing a little bit of a backlog of talented players um, you know entering in other draft classes when otherwise they would have cleared out here um, you know, you're going to start to see extra prospects a year later from those who went to the junior college and three years later um, so there's going to be some difficult draft decisions down the road. So are we expecting like a loaded class in another you know just next year or the year after in terms of depth uh the, the you know the absolute best of the best of course will still go in these five rounds and a number of those young players who are very eager to get going are, are still going to sign as an undrafted player i think that market's going to be a little more frenetic than usual because you don't have the ordered rounds to to assign um you know assign players to a new team um and so in this in this interim players are getting really creative about you know in the past even especially five, 10 years ago, um, you know, players were very beholden on scouts coming to see them. And, you know, we've started seeing a lot more data and technology helping uh, players boost their profiles over the years. Uh, and everyone I've talked to in the game, a couple dozen people have all said it really accelerated this spring. And so if you're a pitcher, you know, you can get a, a pocket radar um, and put it in your back backyard. And all of a sudden you've got yourself, you know, um, you know, a velocity reading. Like if you've been working, you know, all some all, all winter, getting ready to throw a little bit harder, and you can do it. You know, there was a a, a young man down um, who hit 97 uh, on a pocket radar, posted the video um, to, to Twitter, sent it to um, you know a few of the, the showcase companies that help promote these things, and within an hour, he had a college coach asking for his contact information, had a junior college commitment within a week after you know several dozen um, you know schools expressed interest, um, and we're seeing it with the, the pro scouting community as well, where you know if, especially if the quality of data is a little bit better, where the, a Rapsodo machine can also give you spin rate and spin efficiency, um, so you know, the, how much the a pitch is breaking. Um, you know, there are a lot of players doing, um, you know, a lot of creative activities, you know, even throwing in a converted laundry room in the family basement. That was one of my favorite mm -hmm. videos I saw. <laughs> um, right. And they, you'd be doing that anyway, as you mentioned, 10 years ago. But now it can be all videotaped and sent. Um, I know you wrote a piece on this, like, every day is Friday. Explain that phenomenon of how scouting is being done now. Yeah, um, it was a, a phrase I heard from from Dana Brown, who's been a scouting director for a few organizations, and he leads the Atlanta Braves scouting effort now. Um, he talks about how there's only so many Fridays. Uh, it's particularly true for, for college pitchers where they have these weekend series, and Friday night you always throw your ace out there. But, you know, if you're a scout, you can only go to so many Friday night games. Um, now, in the Power Five conferences, almost every single one of them has 
uh, and in-game technology, whether it's TrackMan, Yocker Tech is a one up on the rise, there's Flight Scope. Um, as a result, you're getting a lot of very granular information on, on pitchers every single start. So even if you're only in attendance for one game, you're able to get really good information um, from all the others. And so all of a sudden, the, the dynamic changes where you don't have to pick and choose quite so much. And, you know, everyone I spoke to says that in-person scouting is still very valuable and there are certainly lots of insights you can only gain that way, um, but the data is going to help drive the decisions of where to travel. You're going to, the scouts have a better idea of who really should be, who really warrants that extra attention, you know, thanks to the data. Um, yeah, scouting without games. Um, how much do you think, I mean, because I know you wrote about it being, wow, it's such a plus because with the technology explosion now, you can really kind of scout athleticism. But I, I don't even want to push back on this, but I just want to open it up to all sides. How much are we going to be missing then? If Because it, it seems, Joe, that we're still going to love tools, 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 right? It's like we love this kid with the – now it's, now it's the, 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 the link, right? The, the link that he has and the coordination and the explosive power. You bring up Bo Bichette looked beautiful, uh, which makes sense, you know, on, on video. But are we going to be what's what's the trade off there that you're that you won't see if that's what you're looking at because the technology is so good? Yeah, no, it's true, and that's the, the this next wave that you allude to is that the, the biomechanics, that kinematic sequence, the uh, the way that you activate your, um, your your muscles in order, whether you're swinging or pitching, that's certainly kind of the the holy grail of what teams are looking for because it can show some raw athleticism. And I, I do think you're right that there is going to be more emphasis purely on tools as a result of some of these devices, particularly when there haven't been games as uh, there haven't been this spring. Um, and so uh, Kyle Boddy, who, you know, the driveline baseball founder who worked for the Reds now, I mean, he made a very good point is that, you know, even though he at driveline has used a lot of these tools to help promote, um, you know, a lot of their prospects, um, he emphasized how important it is to have area scouts, building relationships, hearing through the, the grapevine about players who, particularly if they're from underserved communities who may not have access to some of the same technologies, um, those are, you know, you're still going to need the area scouts to, to try to unearth some of those young players. Um, and so you, you really do need to have a good balance of the two. Um, and so a lot of the, the scouts that I, I spoke to have said that the technology has been a, a way to piece together, um, you know, parts that have been missing this spring. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you only have five picks, you might be more inclined to choose someone who's really performed at a high level. And so at least one prediction I heard is that a lot of ACC and SEC players, um, they're going to kind of be the default because um, those are probably the two best conferences in, in baseball. So you're going to see a lot of those players now, but as in the future, as these tools be, do become more prevalent, you're going to see even more emphasis on tools. Why is that so special in, in this wave now? What you're explaining with biomechanics and being able to uh, try to explain why that's such a, uh, a big step in the evolution. Sure. Uh, well, well, one thing that's happening is a lot more of the technologies you can use just on cameras. So it's not very intrusive. You're not asking players to wear anything that might be uncomfortable. And um, but it what it does is, um, you know, Greg Rose, who um, one of the co-founders of OnBase University, a great coaching platform with a lot of these, uh, you know, new age ideas. He says it's basically the the simplest way of quantifying someone's athleticism is how well they move this kinematic sequence. Um, and, you know, everyone's generating force from the ground up and the, those who are able to, to do so seamlessly and lose less energy along the way, they're going to throw a, a faster fastball. They're going to hit a, you know, with a better exit velocity. Um, and it's that power in the game that we're going to see, um, you know, really, uh, really reach their full potential. So yeah, kind of a hidden game, right? You, there's still a hidden game in there that maybe his results data, a player's results data isn't great, but you're like, no, there's something there that we're seeing underlying that's fantastic that maybe can be mined. Absolutely. And I think increasingly teams are very confident in their player development programs. And if they get some of those raw tools inside their system, they feel very confident that they can refine them and turn them into big league caliber players. All right, Joe, uh, Always a pleasure speaking with you. People can find Joe's stuff on Sport Techie. And Joe, congratulations. You and your wife had a baby girl, a daughter. Congratulations to you. I know you're in quarantine, so it's all baby time all the time, huh? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, baby Annabelle's been a real blessing these last four months. Thanks very much. Well, congratulations to you and your family. Thank you, Joe. All right, thank you.